Hello, Namaste, welcome to Dave's Hammer Show. This is the weekly flagship program of Indigenous Television. The aim of this program is to bring the voices, lessons, and experiences of Indigenous peoples from different countries and connect with one another, mainly through face to face interviews and uh, online video conferences. In this episode, I'm going to discuss about the COVID-19 and indigenous peoples on the occasion of International Day of World Indigenous Peoples. In order to discuss on the theme, today I have invited newly appointed UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, Francisco Kalidze. Francisco comes from a Maya Kitsikel indigenous community in Guatemala. Before being appointed as UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, he was president of the Committee for the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discriminations in CERD, which is also called CERD Committee. Similarly, he also was ambassador of Guatemala to the Federal Republic of Germany. In CERD, he is long-time defender of indigenous peoples' rights both in Guatemala and at the level of the United Nations. Let me welcome him in the show. Francisco, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations for being appointed as a new UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And welcome to the show. So thank you very much, uh, Dev, uh, for this opportunity. And I am very proud to be with you. As we are celebrating the International Day of uh, World's Indigenous Peoples, um, today, I would like to discuss with you uh, on the uh, COVID-19 and indigenous peoples. Uh, moreover, the coincidence is uh, right in the occasion of your appointment as a special rapporteur on the rights of indigenous peoples, COVID-19 pandemic spread across the globe, resulting vulnerability to the world uh, indigenous populations. And numerous uh, uh, cases of human rights violations during COVID-19 was reported in media. I guess uh, you also have received a number of reports um, as you also had sought inputs of human rights violations of indigenous peoples during this pandemic. So uh, to start uh, our conversations, I would like to ask you, um, what is your observations on the violations of human rights of indigenous uh, peoples around the world uh, during the COVID-19 crisis? Well, as you know that uh, many of the uh, international uh, instrument of human rights have been saying that the right of indigenous people to, to enjoy the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health without discrimination is uh, specifically, as I said, recognized by the, almost all the international instrument of human rights. And uh, I believe that, uh, uh, that that is something that um, has been recognized by those uh, international instrument, uh, but unfortunately in the reality, um, there are two, it's a big gap that is between the recognitions and the reality that the indigenous people uh, are living in this moment. And specifically with the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, uh, what uh, I am seeing with all the report that I have been receiving is that, um, that uh, there, there was, there is a, or there, wa there was a cobra of the reality of, 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 the, of the indigenous people. And what COVID-19 have done is take, of, take out that uh, cover from that reality and the crude reality is coming out to the light in this moment. Uh, and that's why I believe that uh, um, uh, the issue that is, uh, I'm seeing in this moment uh, uh, is reflected what uh, uh, the General Secretary of the United Nations uh, first uh, statement uh, uh, that he he gave to to to, to United Nations when he stated that uh, that uh, COVID nineteen doesn't discriminate anybody, but the the impact or the result of the pandemic is going to be different because it's going to affect 
the most the more vulnerable vulnerable people among which are the indigenous peoples and that is what we are seeing in this moment um, and i think that uh, what i'm seeing in this moment is not only that uh, that that uh, um, COVID-19 is violating the human rights of indigenous people. Is the state who has been not respecting the human rights of indigenous people. As I said, uh, COVID-19 took over uh, or took out uh, the, the cover that, uh, that was uh, covering the reality of indigenous people. So what I'm seeing in this moment, what is taking place in this moment, is that the uh, state are taking advantage of uh, of the uh, state of emergency that they have declared to almost all the countries uh, to take over all the 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 projects that they had before that they they, they where they need uh, to the prior consultation with indigenous people then now they are just uh, doing without consultation so what I'm seeing now is also that uh, uh, the companies who are uh, um, extracting all the minerals uh, from uh, indigenous territories, they are just doing uh, uh, in this moment, they are not uh, taking any measure to prevent uh, uh, the, the spreading of, uh, of COVID-19. So what I'm seeing in this moment is that, uh, that uh, the territories are in danger, uh, uh, the indigenous territories are in danger. The other issue is that uh, also the, some states are taking advantage of, uh, of uh, COVID-19 uh, to criminalize the struggle of indigenous people to defend their, their rights. And that is very important to highlight it because uh, in this moment, uh, uh, well, before it was uh, uh, on the name of uh, anti-terrorism, they had been they they had been imposing them or they are applying them the uh, anti-terrorist law. In this moment, they are uh, they are taking uh, the excuse that they are they are uh, protecting the their citizens for not spreading the the COVID nineteen to impose to them uh, uh, the, the law against uh, those people, especially the, the people who are uh, human rights defenders of the indigenous people. And the other thing that I'm seeing is, uh, again, is that uh, what uh, is taking place uh, is that uh, there is not um, uh, a data as, uh, that, uh, that uh, reflect specifically how many indigenous people have been affected, how many are there, uh, uh, have been contacting uh, or have, have been, um, uh, who are, con uh, or who are, are the contagious people uh, uh, who have been involved in, in into the, to, to the indigenous communities. So what uh, I'm seeing is that also there are not a, uh, um, uh, access to education because uh, as you see uh, uh, and as you know before the indigenous people were the, the most uh, affected by education because they, these education are not uh, uh, according to their culture and uh, they have also have been not given to into their own languages but today because uh, uh, to prevent the the spreading of the of covid-19 now all the all the education formal education is given uh, uh, in a we can say it in a virtual education so many and i can say the majority of indigenous people they are not uh, have the opportunity to have uh, internet in their community, not even in, in their houses. So that is getting more, uh, in this moment, is, is getting more uh, difficult to, for indigenous people to receive uh, the uh, normal or the, um, <clears throat> the, the, the formal education that they need to receive. So uh, what uh, I'm seeing is there are many other indigenous people's rights who who has been uh, violated and has been affected by by the COVID-19. But let me tell you, I think that uh, that is something that we have been living historically. But uh, uh, that we cannot present indigenous people only as a who are. Um, 
uh, affected by, by COVID-19 or as a victim of, of, of the COVID-19. I think that the indigenous people have been demonstrated, have been shown to the international community that uh, when they are practicing their own autonomy or they are practicing the self-determination, they, they are able to uh, confront any any problem problem that is coming from outside of their community, they have been showing that they are capable to produce their own food, uh, to produce their own security. So they, what I'm seeing is that indigenous people is going to come. Uh, uh, is, is they are going to come out uh, very uh, probably. Is going to be affected, but they are going to be coming also strongly organized after the COVID-19. You also said that uh, it is not only indigenous peoples, but uh, also other sections of the society equally affected by the COVID-19. But again, uh, why do you think indigenous peoples need to be uh, given priority during this, uh, during such a uh, pandemic or crisis? United Nations has been recognized that uh, uh, that the uh, indigenous people are among uh, those people who are in most at risk and they have been experienced the highest degree of socioeconomic marginalization and uh, of course requiring a, a specific attention and also uh, immediate uh, attention on, on development uh, and historically indigenous people have been suffering uh, structural discrimination and racism and and i think that uh, that uh, not only discrimination uh, racism and discrimination but also in economical injustice uh, in, the, in in the society uh, as i said uh, uh, what covid-19 has been uh, has been shown to us is the reality that indigenous people people have been living historically health uh, service uh, has been not uh, uh, given uh, to indigenous people and you can imagine if the indigenous people are not receiving uh, that health service in urban areas how you are going to think about people who are living far away in the rural areas where sometimes you need to to walk 12 hours 14 hours or two days uh, some cases say uh, you have to walk two days to get uh, to a health center uh, what I, I'm seeing is that uh, uh, is the vulnerability that indigenous people are facing in this moment is what I believe uh, that uh, indigenous that's why indigenous I believe that indigenous people need a uh, um, a specific attention and priority attention during this pandemic because uh, at the other side or, or by on the other hand also it uh, if you see the indigenous people who are uh, the major oh, okay, let me rephrase this the majority of the indigenous peoples because of their condition are the less people who had uh, immunity Immunity, no, not immunity, in, in, yeah, in, immunity, I can say. Um, the health immunity that the indigenous people had historically had been shown that any new uh, illness is going to affect very strongly the community. But if you can imagine those people who had uh, in initial contact or are not contacted, they are the more vulnerable people. And I believe that those people are the ones who are suffering in this moment. And that's why they are uh, international uh, uh, requesting, uh, specifically in, in the Amazonian area, that uh, they are seeing that, that probably is going to, some people are going to disappear completely. And some people are going to diminish uh, their population because the impact of COVID-19. And that's why I believe that the indigenous people, uh, it's needed to give priority attention in this uh, or during this uh, pandemic uh, situation. You rightly said that uh, one of the rights of indigenous peoples which have been violated during uh, COVID-19 is uh, health rights. Uh, we uh, media personal experienced that uh, indigenous peoples could not enjoy their right to public uh, 
uh, health information. So their right to information in their language was violated massively. In this regard, uh, if you have to list down five major and common rights uh, of the world's indigenous peoples, uh, being violated during a uh, COVID-19 pandemic. What uh, uh, those rights are? Wow, that is, uh, is, a, is a big question because uh, uh, I think that there are not any right in this moment of indigenous people that uh, is not in risk of violation. But anyway, I, I can tell you that, uh, uh, as I said, health right is one of, of the most important uh, right that is has been violating in this pandemic situation but also as i said in the beginning criminalization of the defense of the rights of the indigenous people is another one the right of education the right of respecting their territories and their land and i believe that also is a, a bigger uh, issue the respect of the spirituality of indigenous people. Uh, there are many, uh, I'm not saying that all the, the religions, <clears throat> and I'm, go I'm not going to say that all the churches are doing or they are discriminating indigenous people uh, spirituality, but some of them, in some cases, uh, uh, a part of those churches are the ones who are more radical and they are taking advantage of this situation uh, even telling the indigenous people that they are the, the response, they are the responsibles of the pandemic because they, they don't believe in their God. So that's why I believe that uh, the spirituality is one also of, uh, of, uh, of the right uh, of uh, indigenous people that has been violating. But the self-determination and autonomy is the other one that I believe that is, it has been violating by uh, in this moment. I read your statement uh, issued uh, in the websites of Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, in this statement, you have raised concerns over the devastating impact um, of the COVID-19 pandemic on indigenous peoples. And previously, you also rightly said uh, that indigenous peoples are affected by other threats in addition to health threats. So uh, what uh, you mean, uh, what do you mean are the threats or challenges faced by indigenous peoples other than health? Well, as I said, uh, uh, there are uh, food security, uh, development, uh, also the trans-border uh, people who are not allowing to move, uh, uh, through their communities, uh, education, spirituality, uh, respect of indigenous uh, people's authorities, environment. Uh, I think also that uh, I have received also uh, reports of uh, uh, intrafamiliar, uh, family, intrafamily, family violence, uh, forced migration, uh, and also the situation of the indigenous, human indigenous people, because uh, many people believe that the indigenous people are living only in the rural areas, but there are some cases that in some countries that the majority of the indigenous people are indigenous, human indigenous, who are living in the, in the big cities, unfortunately, uh, because the forced movement that they have been uh, uh, passing through the history, so they lose their land in the rural areas, so they have to move to the uh, to the urban areas. Now they are the ones who are suffering more. So I think that uh, what I'm seeing in this moment is uh, that uh, those are the ones that are more uh, high, I can say, uh, highlighted in, in my report. During COVID-19, as uh, you also had sought inputs from um, indigenous peoples, um, as well as states on the human rights violations. Uh, by the way, did you find any countries developing uh, policies or origin services for addressing the needs of indigenous communities? Yes, I saw some of them, uh, but some of them, they came out uh, late because uh, they had uh, uh, been uh, um, Probably they had uh, two months, three months uh, uh, um, that uh, had uh, come out uh, 
Uh, specifically, I believe this is from, from Chile, Costa Rica, Panama, Mexico, Sweden. I, I, I don't remember other countries, that, uh, that, but there are about uh, seven, eight countries that have been uh, taking uh, measures, uh, uh, specifically measures for indigenous peoples. There are uh, human rights violations and challenges faced by indigenous peoples too. Uh, what recommendations uh, do you give uh, for the states and UN agencies for ensuring that indigenous peoples receive the attentions uh, that they need during COVID-19 and a similar uh, kind of crisis? I believe that uh, what I can say to, to, to the state uh, is that uh, they need to take in account uh, indigenous people uh, when they are preparing some uh, uh, program to attend indigenous people uh, during this, uh, this, uh, this pandemic uh, 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 problem. Uh, specifically taking in account that uh, the measures has to be given uh, in in on on, indig on indigenous people languages uh, and also they have to take in account uh, the specificality of indigenous people culture they have to ensure that those recommendations and those work plans to confront covid-19 has to be uh, alone to the indigenous pe uh, people culture and also they have to to stop uh, giving license to the the transnationals who are uh, uh, extracting or the the the, the mm, minerals or or all the natural resources they have not been authorized before and that they have to respect also that uh, that uh, the free and prior co uh, consultation to get uh, the, their consent has to be respected because uh, COVID-19 doesn't give any uh, green light uh, to the state to violate in, uh, the indigenous people's rights that have been recognized uh, in the international uh, arena. And I believe that um, in this moment they, they, they must and they have the obligation to respect all the international uh, human rights uh, 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 instrument uh, that uh, have been ratified or have been signed by the state that protect indigenous people's rights. And, and of course, uh, uh, I believe that uh, what uh, the state has to do is to work together with indigenous people to confront uh, COVID-19, specifically with the examples that indigenous people have given uh, when they have been produced their own food. And uh, they uh, indigenous people, I have information, I have reports from indigenous organizations that they are producing their own food, but also they are sharing that food with other communities that are not indigenous people. So they are showing their solidarity in the middle of, uh, of, uh, of the crisis of, that has been created by COVID-19. But uh, to the UN agencies, I believe that they have to, to, to work together uh, I think that they have to, to not only together but unified in a unified uh, effort to attend indigenous people uh, uh, in, inside uh, this crisis that has been provoked by COVID-19. Francisco, we all uh, we talked a lot about uh, the COVID-19 and indigenous peoples. Uh, we also want to listen uh, to your plan of actions during your tenure as a special rapporteur on the rights of uh, indigenous peoples. What are your plans of actions during uh, your next uh, four years in your? Well, uh, you know that uh, uh, always when uh, when uh, a special rapporteur take uh, the the duty to be a special rapporteur every year, the assembly general assembly asks you what is going to be your next year plan of work. Uh, but in my plan of work, when, when I was uh, uh, before COVID-19, I was thinking to, to do is specifically uh, uh, 
to work specifically on, on, on the impact uh, uh, of uh, the larger scale agriculture and, and deforestation on the right of indigenous people, in particular, focus on uh, palm oil, soya bean, sugar plantation, and cattle ranching. Is even still today, uh, that is one of the issues that I will raise next year. Uh, and this inside my, my um, we can say my topics that is in particular focused during, the, during my mandate. And also I have been uh, uh, thinking on, on to see what uh, uh, are those practices and what le lessons we have learned on identifying the mar demarcation or the marketing titling uh, and raising indigenous people's land and territories. Uh, because I believe that uh, that is one of the problems that we have because uh, the uh, insecurity, legal insecurity that indigenous people had specifically with their lands uh, is, is very, is, is a big problem that indigenous people are, are facing in this moment. So that's why I believe that uh, that is going to be one of my, my key point. Uh, that is going to, we are, I'm going to take uh, uh, in my work plan. And of course, uh, I have also in my work plan, what is the consequence of, uh, consequences of climate change uh, for indigenous people, including effective and sustainable practice to prevent or mitigate impact on their individual and collective rights. And as you know, uh, also indigenous peoples are the ones who have been taking care of the environment uh, and, and their lands are where you are going to find the, the more extensive, uh, uh, the, the, how do you say, the uh, diversity uh, or biodiversity in their territories. Why? Because indigenous people have been able to take care of uh, modern nature. But uh, the issue that uh, they are suffering now uh, in version of those transnationals that they are trying to destroy the, the forest, uh, uh, I think that uh, that's why it's going to be one of my, my issues that I'm going to take on my, my work plan. And of course, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, in my work plan uh, to see what is the impact of the criminalization, arbitrary detention, and other uh, cruel, in, in human and degradating treatment or punishment against uh, uh, indigenous people leaders and human rights defenders of indigenous people. And uh, of course, I wanted to, to see also the good practices and lessons learn uh, in the designing of uh, conduct of cultural environment and social impact assessment report uh, regarding development pro proposed to take place on land and territory traditionally occupied uh, uh, or used by indigenous people. I would like also to see uh, and sometime to stop uh, specifically because next year is going to be the 20th anniversary of the creation of the mandate of the special rapporteur to stop and to see background on what had what the special rapporteur of indigenous people her right had been achieved in these twenty years, because I believe that the three my three uh, uh, antecessors are they have been done a very good work, and I believe that what we have to do is to to systematize all the work the special rapporteur have done and to see what they have achieved and what has been put aside, not because the importance is because a uh, situation like COVID-19 that, uh, that is taking too much attention in this moment and we are uh, putting aside some of the issues that is very important for indigenous people, but because COVID-19, we are taking care of, uh, of the impact of COVID-19 uh, on indigenous people in this moment. So, that is something that I, I am willing to do, uh, but I will, I will see if I am going to have support to do it. But I am very interested to do that systematization also.
at last, uh, I don't have a question, uh, Francisco, in fact. Uh, so if you have anything to emphasize on any point that I haven't asked you and you want to share on the topic that we have discussed so far. As I say in the beginning, I believe that uh, we are used to say that we are victims of uh, injustice, victim of pandemics, victim of this, victim of that. But I believe that we have to, to show also the strength of indigenous peoples in this moment. And we have to, to show also the, the, the proud of indigenous people, not only to resist, but also to give some solution of the problems. And I believe that uh, what, uh, what we have to see is that uh, not only uh, getting recognized the right of indigenous people in the international arena, we are or we have been a subject of that struggle but i believe that today we are subject of the history because we are showing that indigenous people we are not only strong but we are proud to be indigenous people and we are going to show that uh, we can come out uh, and overcome on this uh, pandemic showing to the to the other communities that uh, as a communal in a communal life way of life we are going to show that we are uh, uh, not only able but capable to survive and to to secure our food, to create food security to our people. Finally, I uh, would also like you to give a message uh, to the world's indigenous peoples on the occasion of International Day of World uh, Indigenous Peoples, Francisco. I think that uh, the night of, of August. Uh, it's uh, one day that indigenous people have been a gift to, from, from the international uh, human rights uh, uh, field. And I believe that we have to take advantage of this uh, celebration of the International Day of Indig Indigenous People. So my message is going to be uh, that uh, we are strong enough to, to confront uh, COVID-19 and that we have to be proud of our culture, we have to be proud of our language, we have to be proud of our identity. And that's why I believe that uh, uh, the International Day of Indigenous People of the United Nations has to take uh, uh, has to be taken by indigenous people as our own day and we have to celebrate. Of course, today, because the pandemic, we are not going to have those big gatherings that we used to have, but at least we have to use this uh, uh, technology to express our happiness of having this day and to show to the international community that we're still here and we are going to continue to be here no matter of COVID-19. Thank you so much, Francisco, for your valuable time and esteemed thought uh, you shared with us. Thank, Thank, you Thank you very much, Deb. We have come to the end of the show. Uh, with this note, uh, I would like to wrap up this episode. Uh, if you have any queries or feedbacks in relation to uh, this program, you can reach me at indigenoustelevision at gmail.com. Uh, next week, I will come up with uh, new issues and, and a new guest. Uh, till then, have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Namaste.